So I've seen a lot of questions about the latency of the Gen Loss Mark II, uh, but not a lot of real information. And honestly, I've seen a lot of disinformation being spread. So I wanted to put together a quick follow-up video that addresses those concerns. I'll say right off the bat, yes, the Gen Loss Mark II does have considerable latency, uh, and it does have more than the Mark I did. Now, whether or not this is a concern will depend on your use case. Uh, the latency will be imperceptible if you're using the pedal on synths, uh, with any attack at all, or really any melodic source that doesn't have significant transients. But if you're using it on something like super punchy synth bass, or a plucky guitar riff, or a drum loop, uh, the latency can be obvious, and in some cases, unacceptable. So we're going to do this in three steps. First, we'll measure the latency. Second, we'll see what that latency actually means in practice. And then third, we'll go over what you can do to overcome that latency. So first we're gonna measure the latency. Uh, and we're gonna do that using some drum loops that I threw in here. We got a little 505, a little 808 loop. Uh, very dry, so it'd be obvious to hear any uh, you know, latency or phasing issues that we have. Very simple. We're gonna be using this uh, Zoom U24 audio interface. Uh, not the greatest thing, but uh, so the only one I've got where the, uh, all the plugs are on the top, so you'll easily be able to see what I'm patching and what I'm doing. We're also going to be using a plug-in in the DAW called Pipeline. Put it here. And basically this lets me route uh, audio in and out of the DAW as an insert. So we're going to set up our send as output 1. Uh, which is this one here. And then our return will be input two, which is this one here. Input one is my uh, vocal mic that you're hearing now. So basically what this plugin is doing is it's sending audio out of an output, which is this one here, and then receiving it back in an input, which is this one here. And the intent is that you would use this to, you know, use hardware effects as an insert in your DAW. But right now, because I don't have these this input and this output physically connected. Uh, if we play back our drum loop again, uh, we hear nothing because we've got audio coming out of here, but nothing going back in. One of the key things about this plugin is that it allows you to compensate for uh, the latency that's introduced uh, anytime you're going in and out of an audio interface and introducing uh, components in the, in the physical world. So that latency compensation tool is going to allow us to take some measurements and understand what our latency actually is with this pedal. So the first thing we need to do is get a baseline. Uh, the interface itself will actually have some latency in it. So we need to understand what that is so that we can subtract it from our numbers later to get the true latency number of the generation loss. So now that I've patched my output to my input uh, as assigned in this plugin, I can run uh, the auto test and you can see it's it's aligned uh, the audio so the blue line is my uh, return signal the orange line is my send signal and you can see that it has uh, aligned them so that they're in phase so now that we've got that alignment we can see that the uh, kind of baseline interface uh, latency is 27.54 milliseconds that's our current round trip latency so we'll need to remember that uh, for later so we can subtract it to understand what our true generation loss latency is. So now that we've got that, we're going to change our routing again. We're now going to come out of our output into the gen loss. Out of the gen loss. Into the input. So really the only thing we've changed there is instead of just a direct feed from this output to this input, we've now got the pedal in that loop. So we still have the pedal off. Let's take another measurement and see what happens. Okay, so you can see that number changed. It went up to 36.4. So uh, in soft bypass, even when the pedal is bypassed, we're already seeing some additional latency there. Now let's turn the pedal on. I've got everything turned off. We're just passing through audio right now. We'll take another measurement. 
and we can see there are numbers changed again. And we have even more latency. So remembering that our interface latency was 27.54, um, our latency of just the pedal is approximately 25 milliseconds. The latency of the dry signal, again, take out the 27 or so milliseconds of the interface, and we're looking at about nine milliseconds for the dry signal. So not only do we have a total uh, latency of 25 milliseconds, we also have 16 milliseconds difference between the wet and the dry signal. So you'll have to decide for yourself if 25 milliseconds is uh, an acceptable amount of latency for the instrument that you play or the sound that you're processing. I mean, for me, I play synthesizers, 25 milliseconds is pretty negligible um, in like 95% of cases where you have any type of attack on your patch. And honestly, I think this pedal is marketed more towards, you know, your synthesizer players, those types of sounds, uh, dirtying up that stuff more than just like a straight up guitar pedal. I mean, if you look at the, the demos that they have um, for the pedal, it's typically not being used as like a, a, a normal guitar pedal. It's, it's more for the synth type, uh, synth wave, lo-fi kind of stuff. So um, I think in that capacity, 25 milliseconds is negligible. Uh, but for the people who want to use it for um, stuff that has more transients, that, that might not work out for them. But, you know, it's, it's, it's person by person on whether or not uh, 25 milliseconds is acceptable. The real crime, I think, is the difference between the wet and the dry signal, uh, about 16 milliseconds between them. What that means is uh, you can't use the internal, you know, you can't bring in the dry signal and get phase coherent results. Now, again, this, I think this pedal is intended to be used mostly on synthesizers. Um, so, you know, a 16 millisecond difference between uh, the wet and the dry signal is probably not a big deal. A huge component of this pedal is the wow and flutter. That's going to throw all those measurements out the window because now your wet signal is going to be going all over the place. So again, I, th I think those are the things that Chase Bliss was thinking about when they made this pedal for what this pedal does and what it's used on and the fact that it's doing pitch modulation anyway. I mean, honestly, who cares if there's a little bit of difference in latency between the wet and the dry signal? but that does hurt it significantly when it comes to drum processing. You start running drums for this thing and then mixing the dry signal and you've got a problem. So let's, uh, let's take a look at that and so you can hear what I'm actually talking about. So I've got this uh, kind of cheesy dry 505 loop going here. And right now we're, um, you see our mix is 100% on the pipeline plugin. So we're hearing just the pedal. And right now our dry signal is completely off. So this is just the signal going through the pedal, no really processing going on. Uh, so this is the effect that we've got. I'm gonna turn this up so you can hear it a little bit better. But listen what happens when I bring in uh, the dry signal and run the dry signal in parallel. It's just the wet signal. So I think you can obviously hear there, um, there's some latency going on. Uh, listen to the uh, transient on the kick drum. Uh, there's an obvious doubling, phasing, flaming, whatever you want to call it. So that's a disappointing thing about the difference between the wet and the dry signal is you start getting into drums and it just kind of becomes a phasey mess. Now again, was Chase Bliss's intention to create this intricate, perfectly phase locked parallel drum processor? No, I don't think so. I think this is meant to be a synthesizer pedal. As it exists, I think the dry switch is meant to 
you know, bring in some high end to help the sound cut through the mix a little bit uh, after you make the wet signal kind of destroyed and mushy. It's just meant to bring in um, a little bit of the high end to help your sound cut. I mean, the whole point of this pedal is it's supposed to make things sound bad, not be a uh, perfectly in phase drum processor. So we're kind of working outside of the realm of what the intent of the pedal is here, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and cover it nonetheless. So we've already established because of the difference in the wet and dry signal, um, using the pedal on its own as a drum processor is kind of out the window. But let's talk about what you can do to fix that problem. Basically, the answer is this plugin that we've already been looking at. Um, I think this is fairly typical in most DAWs. I use Studio One, but I think any DAW is probably going to have something similar where you can route audio out to an external device back in and then have some type of latency compensation built in. So uh, we've already got this set up. Uh, we've got the latency compensation in for the wet signal. What this plugin allows me to do is this is a... Uh, mix between the completely dry signal within the DAW and then the completely wet return that's coming back from the pedal. Uh, I can mix it in any wet dry ratio I want. And because we've got this, uh, you know, latency compensated, we're not going to run into the same issues we do with just the pedal, uh, which is the flaming. So let's test that theory. Let's, let's hear a quick uh, comparison of what it sounds like in the pedal uh, when you mix the wet and the dry versus when you do it using the tool in the DAW. Completely wet. And then with the dry. Obvious issues. Now, I'm going to pull this mix knob back to about 50-50, which is going to be the same condition we were at on the pedal when we had the uh, dry signal at Unity, and we'll hear the difference. Now there is a tonal shift because uh, audio passing through the pedal doesn't come out completely clean. It's doing some lo-fi stuff before you even touch any of the knobs. Uh, so we are hearing a tonal shift. But when you listen to the transients and the phase of the drums, um, you can clearly hear that this is a major improvement over just using the pedal by itself. So I'll swap back and forth between them a couple of times so you can hear that again. So completely wet. Obvious latency, and now doing the same thing in the DAW. There is a tonal shift. The transients are good. Let's hear it with another type of drums. Completely wet. Bringing in the dry with the pedal. So the 808 is really obvious. You can hear the transient on the kick of the 808. There's some major doubling stuff going on. No bueno. So we're going to pull the dry signal back out from the pedal and do the same thing again and see if it sounds any different. So again, we do have that tonal shift from the pedal, but uh, our transients are honored. So why would you want to do this? What's the whole point of now I've got to get a DAW in the mix, I've got to have this latency compensation plugin, why would I go through all the trouble of doing this? Well, let's, let's experiment with this a little bit. Let's uh, mess with our wet signal, see what we can do with it, and then mix that back in with the dry.
All right, so I like that tone and distortion there. If I try to bring in the dry signal on the pedal, It is kind of a cool effect, but uh, you can hear the latency issues. So let's try that now with the uh, pipeline plugin. Completely dry. With some Jim Moss flavor. I really like using the pedal in this way. You can do some interesting things between the saturation and the model. You can kind of blow up that drum sound and then tuck it right under your clean drums to get some, some really great character. And it's really unfortunate that you can't do that uh, within the pedal itself. It may sound crazy, but I think it would have actually been better to intentionally delay the dry signal in the pedal to line up with the wet signal. I mean, if your overall latency is going to be 24 milliseconds anyway, you might as well delay the dry signal too and get those to line up. So if you did want to play uh, with some drums in it, you have that ability to do some parallel processing without having to involve a DAW. So let's do one more example. We'll try some acoustic style drums. Obvious flaming. All right, let's let's blow these up a little bit. So again, just tucking in that, that blown out wet signal. I'm gonna go through a few models to see if I can find um, kind of a model profile that sounds really good under this thing. And then maybe just slam it with some compression and see what kind of cool sounds we can get by doing this parallel processing. So there you go. If you have a DAW and some patience, you do have the ability to uh, do some cool stuff with drums or maybe even some full tracks with phase coherence. Um, it's just a shame that you can't do it within the actual pedal itself. This is really only going to help people in a studio environment. This is not something you're going to 
reasonably do live. So the people using this live, uh, yeah, you're just kind of stuck with the uh, latency. But again, I think we're navigating kind of outside the realm of what this pedal is really intended to do. I think it's great at what it does, uh, but I did just want to share that information about the latency, do with it what you will. Uh, it's up to each person to determine if, if 25 milliseconds is, is too much for them. I know this was a lot of like technical kind of mumbo jumbo, but uh, if you've not checked out my full review uh, and sounds only videos of the pedal, please do so. There's some really awesome sounds in this thing. Uh, Y'all should check it out.